Uh, my name is Dave Liss. I currently lead strategy and business operations at Bleacher Report. I've been there for almost nine years. Uh, started my career in management consulting. Um, I graduated from Mona in 2010. And a fun fact is, what is a fun fact? Well, I played basketball at Pomona. It was one of the big things that I that I did on campus. And so to be still working in sports, which is a rare opportunity, um, is is a pretty cool combination of business interests and personal passion. So early on, it was all about industry focus for me. I wanted to, you know, Deloitte is a large consultancy, so they work across just about every industry. I was I didn't know enough to know, but I was interested in uh, learning more about retail. I was interested in learning more about healthcare. This was also, this was 2011. So it was on the precipice of what ended up becoming Obamacare. So I got the opportunity to work with a state hospital system that was trying to figure out what the implication of Obamacare, should it pass, would be on its hospitals and insurance providers. And fascinating stuff. Um, but I bounced around industry wise. At the point in which I found Bleacher Report, and it was at such an intersection of a personal passion of mine, sports and sports media, um, as well as a business focus of, of things that I had done, strategy, analytical work, what have you. Uh, like I mentioned, what I wanted was a blend of 30,000 foot long-term view strategy and near term, how do we get from today, today to tomorrow in the most efficient way, execution. And I've always, I mean, I've led the strategy and ops team here for a number of years. Uh, I used to run our analytics function as well. And I've always thought of strategy and operations as being two sides of the same spectrum. Mm -hmm. Too many companies <laughs> have them bifurcated and, and not connected where strategy happens sort of in the ivory tower, but it's disconnected from the way the realities of the business function. It's disconnected from budget. It's disconnected from people. I love the fact that they're connected. Uh, and I think of them as being very connected. And when it works, you can set a strategy that is three years, five years um, out in nature and allocate your resources, allocate your budget, allocate your mind share in the near term accordingly so as to ladder towards that strategy. Um, and that's where I think successful businesses separate themselves from, from less successful ones. You know, it's funny, like I, I always thought of myself as a sports fan because I played sports and specifically basketball right and I didn't really you know I would read articles and I would read the newspaper and I, you know I would consume media I watched sports center every night more times than I care to admit while I was in college like yeah I, I consumed media but I never thought of it as an industry and so I joined BR and the leading edge for me was sports but over the years Sports is still a through line for me, but it's much more of a media job. And I, I find media a really, really interesting, um, in many ways challenged, but a really interesting industry, uh, which, is that, which is to say that there aren't a lot of industries in which getting, getting in front of people and, mm -hmm. and showing them what they want versus covering the news in the way that the news exists mm -hmm. are at odds with one another in the way that, that it is with media. And that was no more true. I mean, outside of sports now, but that was no more true during the last couple of election cycles where the things that drive clicks versus the things that are responsible to report on are not always the same. And mm -hmm. so you have these very misaligned incentives in media that I, I've never seen anywhere else. And I, uh, I think are pretty interesting. So anyway, that's a long rambling answer, but the business has definitely changed a lot and, and my role in it has evolved. I mean, I started out very content and distribution focused and have expanded to be focused across technology and ad sales and, and whatnot.
you know, before we started recording, I was talking to you about the fact that I went to Cal for two years and then uh, Pomona for two, and I got so much out of my two years at Pomona, um, specifically the small community elements of it, relationships with professors, small class sizes, the expectation that you show up into class, having done your homework, having done your reading, having a point of view, um, that translates really naturally into a business function. Um, I spend all day every day on meetings with one to 20 other people, which doesn't feel all that different from a small English class at Pomona in which it's all dialogue and conversation. And then there's some homework, there's some, some analysis, there's some work, whatever to do, but uh, the meat of it is interaction in those small settings. And so, I, you know, I think Pomona students are incredibly well positioned for roles like that, just because of the interpersonal skills that you're forced to make um, or you're forced to build in, in that type of small class setting. Advice for people that are currently on campus, I would say is persistence. Um, the first job is the hardest one to get. And it's increasingly hard when you don't have, you know, a, you haven't been in a bunch of jobs that were wrong so that you can understand what job is going to be right. So inherently there's a cast a wide net approach that is necessary mm -hmm. and you will get shut down more than you get accepted into any field. Um, and so I just, I think it necessitates a level of persistence and, you know, end every call by asking who are the other people that you can introduce me to that I should learn from or have a conversation with. Because the way first jobs and second and third and fourth jobs uh, come about is generally through conversation, right? I introduce you to somebody who introduces you to somebody who, has a job that's perfectly suited for your interests or skill set. Um, for current, current students or, or otherwise, you know, one of the best pieces of feedback uh, or advice that I've been given over the years, uh, a former manager of mine used to say this all the time, and it used to drive me crazy <laughs> at the time. Uh, but I, but I very much get it now, which is get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. And, you know, and I'll make a generalization here, but anybody that got into Pomona is incredibly smart and has been a good student their entire life and sort of understands how to operate well within a, within a system that is given to them. Um, and the business world is a little bit different than that because in order to be successful and uh, find your own way, at some point you will have to disrupt those types of systems um, and not just sort of That's follow the rules that are handed to you. And, you know, to me, what get comfortable being uncomfortable or having uncomfortable situations means is being willing to have a difficult conversation with a colleague when the two of you are not operating eye to eye. Um, being able to give feedback to someone that works for you in a way that is not alienating, but does help them get better. Uh, the ability to give that same feedback up when your manager isn't holding you accountable properly or isn't giving you enough information in order for you to do your job. It's really, really difficult, but the more reps you get, the better you get at it and the less uncomfortable it becomes. Um, so I'm by no means an expert, but I am light years better than where I was 10, 12 years ago. Um, so it's, it's something that requires practice and growth, but uh, does pay off.